Now on to January 2014, C12, question number seven, question about trig tri equations and identities. First of all, it says show that 12 times sine squared x minus cosine x minus 11 is equal to zero may be expressed in the form 12 cosine squared x plus cosine x minus 1 is equal to 0. Okay, now the first thing you need to realize here is the way they want us to express this equation is in a way that you have the same um, trig function all the way through the function. Okay, through the equation. Like here you've got sine and cosine. Here you've got cosine and sine. So basically what's happened is this sine squared x has been transformed somehow into cosine squared x. Okay. Now there are a couple of identities that are really important for you to know. Okay. One of the main ones is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So the sine squared of an angle plus cosine squared of that same angle will always give you 1. Okay. It doesn't matter what the angle is. The sine squared of an angle plus cosine squared of that same angle will always give you 1. That's one of the main identities that we should know. Okay. Um, another identity which may not be put to use here is that tan theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. Okay, so these two identities are really essential for you to know. Okay. And C2 and also later on when you go on to trig trig in C3 and C4, you need to know these identities. And the other identities that come up later in C3 and C4, they can all be derived from these anyway. Anyway, so very important that you know these two identities. So basically what's happened here is the sine squared x has gone. All right? And you can see there's now cosine squared x and cosine x. So basically what's happened is you've, you've got sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. And if you express sine squared x in terms of cosine squared x, so you make this a subject, you have sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cosine squared x. So what's happened is you got you started off with 12 sine squared x minus cosine x minus 11 equals 0. And this sine squared x was replaced by 1 minus cosine squared x. So you have 12 times 1 minus cosine squared x minus cosine x minus 11 equals 0. So you've got 12 minus 12 cosine squared x. Just multiplying out this bracket. That doesn't look like a 12 there, does it? That's a bit better. Oops. Time being neater. <clears throat> okay. So 12 minus 12 cosine squared x minus cosine x minus 11 equals 0. And if we simplify this, we got um, minus 12 cosine squared x minus cosine x. 12 minus 11 is plus 1 equals 0 and just multiply throughout by negative 1 to make this positive as they want us to show here so you're going to multiply throughout my minus 1 so you have 12 cosine squared x plus cosine x minus 1 is equal to 0 and that's exactly what we have to show you see that 12 cosine squared x plus cosine x minus 1 equals 0 Okay, so the key was to replace the sine squared x with 1 minus cosine squared x. And that's an identity that you won't be given, but you must know it. And you can use that to do this. So even if the question said solve this equation without telling you to express in this form, you should know that you need to make the, um, the ratios the same. So it's easy to make the one that is squared the same as the other one. So for example, it's, it's easy for me to make sine squared in, f in, the t in the form of cosine squared because of this identity. Just replace it with 1 minus cosine squared. To make cosine x like sine x, you'll have to use square roots and stuff. It makes things more complicated. Although in this question, they told you 
exactly what to do. All right? They first said express in this form, and then, hence, once you've got this in that form, it says use trigonometry to find all the solutions of the interval between 0 and 360 of this equation, giving each solution in degrees to one decimal place. So we can just now straight away say, okay, this is the same as saying 12 cosine squared x plus cosine x minus 1 equals 0. Now, if you want to solve this equation, um, there's different techniques you can use. One of the um, techniques which is quite useful is to say, all right, let's say y equals cosine x, because I don't want to have to keep writing cosine x all the time, and it also makes it more familiar for us. I can't use x because there's an x already in there, so I'm going to say y equals cosine x. So I can say, okay, this is like, remember now, cosine squared x, it's just actually cosine x squared. That's what it means, but it's written in this form. Okay, so cosine x, cosine squared x means cosine x all squared. So this, this actually means 12. If I'm going to replace y with cosine x, then, uh, or cosine x with y, then this will be 12y squared plus y minus 1 equals 0. Now I'm going to try to factorize this, okay? To factorize this, you can split the middle term. Okay, find two numbers when you multiply them. You're going to get um, minus 12, and the difference between them is, is 1. It looks like it's 4 and 3. It's going to be 4 and 3. So 12y squared plus 4y minus 3y minus 1 equals 0. Common factor is 4. So 4y and y plus 1 minus, and you're going to have nothing except for, sorry, that's 3y plus 1. 3, 4, 4y four times 3y is 12y squared, and 4y times 1 is 4y. And here the common factor is, there's nothing common, so I'm going to put minus and then put 1. Okay, minus, minus 1 times what gives me minus 3y? 3y. Minus 1 times what gives me minus 1? Plus 1. So now you've got your two factors are 3y plus 1, and 4y minus 1 equals 0. So your solutions are going to be y is equal to minus one third and y is equal to positive a quarter. So now we can solve the trig equation. Let's just make some space here. We can solve the trig equation. Remember we set up here um, let y equals cosine x, right? So we can now replace the y with cosine x. So we can say cosine x equals negative a third and you can say cosine x equals a quarter. And the limits that we had were for x between uh, 0 and 360. Okay, so we're going to find all the solutions in that range. So that's what we're going to learn how to do now. Okay, there's different techniques and methods of doing this. But basically, what you could understand from this is some ways to make it really easy. First of all, um, when you press shift cosine of minus a third. You're trying to find um, an angle whose cosine ratio is negative one third. And your calculator will give you one particular solution only. Okay? It won't give you all the solutions. It will give you the principal solution. Okay? What's called the principal solution. Uh, we have to make sure it's in degree mode because the question said to give an answer in degrees. <clears throat> so we're going to put shift cosine that's inverse cosine or arc cosine of negative one third. So negative one third. One over three. Okay, so that gives us one hundred and nine point four seven one. Okay. So x equals one hundred and nine point four seven one. That's what's called the principal solution. Okay. Um now there's lots of ways of thinking about this, but the simplest way of thinking about this is the fact that the cosine curve is symmetrical okay, between 0 and 360 um, through 180 degrees. Okay, symmetrical at 180 degrees. Okay. So the angle we got is 109.471, somewhere down there. Okay. Because it's symmetrical about 180 degrees, 360 minus that angle will give us the other angle in that range, which also shares the same cosine ratio. So if I do 
360 minus 109.471, I'll get the other angle that I need. Okay, so I'm going to do 180, 360 minus the answer. That gives me 250.529. So you have x equals 250 point, what was it, 529? 0.529, yes. 529. Okay, so that's one solution and that's another solution. And then we can see the cosine curve repeats itself every 360 degrees, repeats itself. So um, that value will have another value which is over there which matches it it's the same position and that value will have another value over there every 360 degrees it repeats itself so if i want to find all the other solutions okay that have the cosine ratio of negative one third i have to now just add 360 and subtract 360 from these two values now in so doing i will not find any solution within our given range which was x between zero and 360. Okay, was it the include sign or not? Yeah. Okay, we won't find any solutions in that range. These are the only two solutions within that range. So we stop there. We've got these two, two of the solutions. Then we do the same thing for cosine of a quarter. So we say shift cosine of one quarter. As I said, the calculator gives us the value or the angle, which is the principal angle. So we're going to just make this shift cosine of this time is positive a quarter. If there's a positive one. That gives us 75.522. 75.522. 75.522. And the other angle we're going to get is by doing 360 minus. It's for the same reason. See, 75.522 somewhere over here. There's another angle over there that say it shares the same cosine ratio, which is basically 360 minus this because of the symmetry. So 360 minus 75.2.522. So if we do 360 minus my answer, subtract the answer, you're going to get 284.478. 284.478. Again, now it repeats every 360 degrees. So you could now add 360 to each of these and subtract 360 from each of these. However, that will take us outside of our range. So these are the two solutions that this particular part brings. So our final solutions are going to be 75.522. And you're going to have 109.4. Well, we should write answer to one decimal place in the end. So 75.5, okay, degrees, and 109.5 degrees, and 250.5 degrees, and 284.5 degrees, all to one decimal place. And those are all the solutions we can get, okay? Um, that's using the, the symmetry of the curve. All right, so for cosine, it's always going to be the shift cosine equals, or shift cosine of the ratio equals, that will, the calculator will give you one of your solutions, and all the other solutions, then you'll get another solution by doing 360 minus that. That's for the cosine ratio. And then from there, you just add and subtract 360 to find all the other solutions that you might need. And for the sine curve, it's symmetrical. The sine curve is symmetrical, okay, about 90 degrees, all right? Okay, that's zero, that's 180, 90 degrees. So 180 minus the angle you get in your calculator when you do shift sine of a ratio, the angle you get 180 minus that will give you the other solution, okay, that you need between, you know, in, in, in that range. And then from those two angles, you can generate all the other solutions by doing, by adding 360 or subtracting 360 from those angles because it repeats every 360 degrees, just like the cosine curve. Okay, so that's how you can deal with using sine. So with the cosine, you find one angle um, by your calculator, shift cosine, then you do 360 minus the angle to give you the other angle. And then from those two angles, you can generate any other solutions you might need by adding or subtracting 360 to and from them. And with the, the sine curve, shift sine of the ratio equals gives you one of the angles. 180 minus that gives you the other angle. And then from those two angles, you can generate all the other solutions 
by adding and subtracting 360 because it repeats every 360 degrees. For the tangent curve, however, shift tan equals, that gives you one solution. And all the other solutions are found by adding and subtracting 180 to the angle because the tan curve repeats every 180 degrees. Okay, so we'll see more examples of that as we go through them. But that's basically a quick rundown of how to deal with solving trig equations in a very simple and uh, convenient, fast manner. Thank you for paying attention.